Hello and welcome to lecture 4, wear mechanism, we will be discussing today uh, in this lecture abrasive wear mechanism, a mechanism name is abrasion. Let me start uh, with a some sort of a summary which we have already addressed adhesive wear and as I say in this lecture we are going to discuss about the abrasive wear. In my view abrasive wear is a more dominating or maybe say that the extensively used wear mechanism, adhesive wear will lead to the abrasive wear and then we know also in uh, environment there will be some sort of dust particle which will be involved in wear mechanism in one way or another way. So, that is why the abrasive wear plays more important role compared to any other wear mechanism. But as I mentioned uh, before starting abrasive wear, I am just trying to summarize what we have covered in adhesive wear. We mentioned clearly that adhesive wear will be more dominated in a metal or metallic uh, form, reason being there will be possibility of exchanging the electrons and there will be strong formation or a strong bond formation will be there. Even the when metal uh, comes into contact with a non metal which is a reactive, let us take an example oxygen, fluorine or maybe say even the PTFE, it will act as a uh, abrasive wear or maybe say there will be possibility of a strong form, uh, formation. And then uh, we also mentioned that if there is a very uh, high hardness, it will reduce the adhesive wear. What is the reason for that? because high hardness will not allow easy deflection or deformation and because of the lack of deformation metal asperities will not be able to come very very close to each other because electronic transmission requires almost a difference of the distance of the 1 to 2 atomic uh, distance which will not be possible. So, indirectly hardness plays a major role in adhesive wear. Another thing which I mentioned about the metal and the non metal as I say that if the non metal if the reactive it will act like a metal and then uh, will form a, a strong bond. It will uh, create a adhesive wear quite possible adhesive wear will finally turn out to be like a abrasive wear. We will discuss about those things and I mentioned also that the adhesive wear uh, will cause a some sort of debris formation and that debris will turn out to be the uh, media for uh, abrasive wear. Another one point which we discuss about uh, increasing the complexity of the uh, structure, if adhesive wear need to be minimized, we need to increase the microstructure complexity and I give an example of steel versus iron and I say steel will play better role compared to iron in some form. We introduce another one uh, important concept that was a wear coefficient and wear coefficient was related to probability of adhesive wear or severity of the adhesive wear higher the value more chances of adhesive wear, lower the value will be better for the survivability of that product. So, if you want minimum to minimum then we need to choose appropriate material, increase hardness and operating parameters should be as per the requirement. And uh, another point we come so that when we think about adhesive wear and finally, it turns out to be the abrasive wear we will be discussing in uh, this uh, lecture. We say that uh, Abrasive wear uh, can be divided in a three body uh, abrasion or two body abrasion. Why we are dividing into uh, these two? We say that there is a possibility hard particles or asperities. Asperities will be on the surface itself. That means, one surface with the uh, will be interacting with the other surface via asperities. So, it will be called a two body abrasion. While uh, if there are three hard particle which is coming out of the addition or maybe the environment or then in this situation it will be called a, a three body abrasion. Now, these are the two parts, but again depends on whether the metal which is subjected to the abrasion is a ductile material or brittle material. Now, if depending on the brittle material or a ductile material and, uh, and the, the kind of the particle shape, we can divide abrasive wear itself in a four subdivisions. What, were we are men what is mentioned first is a micro cutting, it is like a cutting tool and then this is something like a here which has been demonstrated. You can see that this is a like a cutting tool, this is a like a cutting tool is going to chip off the soft material 
and if there is a hardness is almost equal then uh, there will be little difficulty to remove the soft surface. If this uh, surface becomes a very hard the quite possible oppositing surface the uh, opposed surface which is uh, incorporating this debris or maybe the, this asperity will that be abraded. So, depends on which surface is a soft surface if this is a soft surface abrasion of the soft surface will occur. If this is a soft surface then abrasion of the this surface will occur. So, this is a relative motion between the surfaces and uh, major role is placed by the asperity and uh, in this case if the asperity is sharp then we are saying it will cause a micro cutting. So, that is why we can say here sharp particle or hard asperities cut through the soft surface cut material is removed as a wear debris. So, finally, what is will be the output as a wear debris, debris and which means that there will be some material removed from a surface. Another uh, mechanism uh, in adhesive wear is a micro fracture. What is the meaning of the micro fracture? It is like a fracture, but it is happening at the micro scale and this is a more dominating in a brittle materials. Reason being that uh, in the, in the brittle material is subjected to sliding and the load quite possible uh, there will be a micro cracks generated between uh, the below the surface and even in the spirit itself and repeated uh, and the action and the sliding will cause uh, this micro crack to get uniform and to get connected with each other and make a bigger uh, and then uh, will we say that crack or uh, and get eliminated or removed from a surface, but that into the fractured form it is not a complete one lump which happens in always in a adhesive wear, but here it will be in a fragmented form. So, what we mention in that in this case the brittle material is essential and then initially it will be a tiny cracks below the surface which will be finally lead to the surface fracture and we can say the word also the pit which pit itself can be a micro in size and it will be the because of the uh, merger or uh, so of the small cracks. So, these two uh, uh, subdivision of the abrasive wear are very common micro cutting happens in case of the uh, ductile material micro fracture will occur in the case of the brittle material. We have a uh, two more subdivisions and that uh, those are microphotic uh, subdivision and then another one what we call the removal of the material grain itself. So, microfertic again will occur in uh, material if the material is a ductile material that is what we are using the word ductile material while uh, grain removal will happen in case of the uh, which is a brittle material like a ceramic material. What is the reason that because in this case a ceramic or a brittle material there will be weak uh, grain boundaries and there is a possibility because there is a weak grain boundary the whole grain comes out in the form of the wear debris. So, in the case of the micro fertic Naturally, one first thing is that chip or with the particle or asperity should not be very sharp. Generally, they are and you know, this kind of asperities are blunt. Maybe you are able to see from the bottom. This is, there is a blunt um, at the bottom, and if this blunt uh, asperity of, uh, moves against a soft surface, it will not be able to cut the groove. This is what has been mentioned here. If when the ductile material is abraded by a blunt particle or asperity cutting is unlikely the cutting will not occur it will not act as a cutting tool which was happening in uh, this kind of a sharp particle. In this case is a sharp particle something like this. So, it will cause a cutting while in this case because the particle at the bottom is a blunt it will not be able to remove the material and if there is a continuous motion or uh, this is a reciprocating motion and loading and unloading is uh, continue or maybe or the loading and unloading of the surface is continue. Now, again in this possibility is there even there is a no reverse direction and the, there is a only direction in one side, but what will happen the particle and the asperities which are coming in a contact they are trying to uh, push the material make a build up edge and then again uh, getting away from this again making another edge then third edge and fourth edge and quite possible if there is another motion again coming back from a same direction it will cause a, this kind of failure or maybe there are 1000 asperities or 10000 asperities then this kind of the failure will occur. So, this will be named as a microfertic abrasive wear which is happening because of the ductile material. So, ductile material is essential next is a coming as a blunt uh, the asperity or particles so of bluntness is there 
and last one is that there should be a load which is will be causing a some sort of sliding the loading and unloading of the material is going to happen. While coming to the grain removal as I mentioned that there are, there are material like a ceramic where the grains may be weaker and then there is a possibility that if this kind of debris come and then try, try to remove the uh, uh, material in form uh, earlier we discussed about the crack formation and then the building of a crack while well, in this case it will act directly against the grain and then try to remove the uh, complete grain and that is why we say the removal of the grain material. So, these are the four uh, major uh, subdivision of the abrasive wear and then uh, as I um, we can summarize this we say that during microphotic abrasive wear extremely strained or maybe say the ductile material remains in shell, uh, essentially intact for the several passages it can be 10 is to 6 cycle, 10 is to 5 cycles depend on the uh, other condition or it can be even 10 is to 7 cycles. So, it will be uh, and the in remain intact, but finally it will turn out to be a uh, uh, wear debris which will be kind of we are saying it is a like a abrasive particle. There is a another um, uh, good thing about the abrasive wear mechanism or understanding wear mechanism is that there are two similar kind of matter and, uh, mechanism which are very related to abrasive wear which are, are the one is the first is erosion wear and second one is a cavitation wear. We will be discussing these two topic in a next lecture why we are saying there is a similarity first thing is that there are particle interaction with a surface and there will be a some sort of uh, velocity while in case of the erosion particle velocity will be very high and then the angle of impeachment we use a word angle of attack that will call erosive wear, but finally which particle comes out it like abrasive wear only and uh, there are number of similarities in a uh, uh, abrasion wear and erosive wear. Similarly, in case, case of the cavitation wear there will be instead of the solid particle there will be liquid particles and uh, because of the negative pressure what will happen the particle will uh, impact the soft surface and I would say that because of the collapse of the bubbles which is in, uh, in the liquid and we know very well liquid when subjected to negative pressure it will form a bubble and again if it is compressed there is a possibility of the collapse of the bubbles and then because of the collapse of the bubble there will be impact or with a high pressure that will allow to remove the material from a surface and that will be known as a cavitation wear. However, these two topic erosive wear and uh, cavitation wear will be discussed in the next lecture and there is a lot of similarities between the abrasive wear, erosive wear and cavitation wear. Now, uh, if I summarize what we have studied in uh, last two slides, what we say that uh, in, uh, if there is a sharp edge of asperity or spherical uh, in the shape of the asperity. So, there are two divisions so the two clear cut division if there is a sharp edge then the mechanism will be different if there is a spherical or maybe the round shape asperities then the mechanism of abrasion will be different. What we say the microfoti caused by the spherical uh, asperity or maybe say rounded asperity if the, if the asperity is rounded then there will be more chances of the microfoti if the material is a ductile material. While in case of the sharp aspirity with the hazard kind of a cutting tool edge or uh, sometimes we use the word conical aspirity that will cause a micro cutting, but again this will be in a ductile material. And in uh, practice what we have realized even the sharp edge cutting uh, aspirity which is starting it finally will get rounded at the bottom and practical situation there will be a mixture of uh, round aspirity and conical aspirities it will be a both the kind of mechanism will be observed in abrasive wear if a material is a ductile material. While well, coming to the brittle material we say that instead of uh, fatigue there will be some sort of micro fracture mechanism will be same and then because they are uh, micro cracks which are generated or uh, developed below the surface they will uh, combine or join together and make a bigger uh, and the crack and then the whole uh, this pit will formation will occur and the particle will come out. So, this is for the brittle material and coming to the another uh, possibility that brittle material has a weak grains and whole grain will come out as a particle uh, from the parent materials. So, there are total 4 mechanism of the abrasive wear which we have uh, mentioned 
and then uh, finally we mentioned about uh, something like uh, there is a lot of similarity between abrasive wear and erosive wear and cavitation wear and main uh, energy difference between uh, erosive wear and uh, abrasive wear is a kinetic energy of particle. In erosive wear particle will come with a some velocity it can be 10 meter per second, 100 meter per second, it can be much more than that also which will come and impact the material and in this impact we again there will be possibility of the, uh, the there will be different mechanism for ductile material and different mechanism for brittle material we will be covering that in the next lecture. And coming to the, uh, uh, the cavitation as I say there will be some sort of liquid and there will be some sort of a bubble formation in liquid because of the negative pressure and that bubble will bust release a very high pressure and uh, maybe the fluid at the high pressure and velocity will impinge or damage the surface and that will be causing a similar kind of the uh, abrasive wear mechanism. Now we will start with uh, two body abrasion as I mentioned in the previous slide that there will be two body abrasion and three body abrasion and which mechanism which whether the two body abrasion is a bad or three body abrasion is a bad we can explore this. So, in two body abrasion mechanism what we are saying there will be the we will be considering only two surfaces maybe say this is a surface 1 and then this is a surface 2. So, two surfaces and uh, both have uh, some sort of uh, asperities and this is a what I am showing a kind of a conical asperity which will act as a cutting tool in this situation. So, in two body abrasion uh, asperity of the hardest surface interact with the softer surface. What is the meaning of that? I am assuming the material 2 in this case is a harder if I apply a load and I am assuming in time being that there is no relative motion between 1 and 2. What in, the, in this situation the uh, under load asperities will dig into the soft surface and then uh, get positioned there. Now, if I bring a some sort of relative motion naturally that this asperity as a part of the material 2 or the surface 2 need to move and when it start moving that this kind of the groove formation is possible or maybe the groove or the, the possibility along with the some sort of building up edge is also possible. So, this is a mechanism uh, what we call a two body abrasion and in this case as I mentioned very clearly the normal load causes the harder asperities to penetrate uh, weaker surfaces and there will be uh, some sort of plastic deformation which is uh, been shown in this case this is a plastic deformation the groove cutting itself is a plastic deformation. And uh, as I mentioned that if I bring uh, some sort of velocity in this, so when the velocity is applied a combination of microfatic and microcutting, uh, microcutting uh, removal will occur. So, there is a uh, uh, microfatic also possibility the building each occurs at the front and the microcutting the kind of the groove is also possible in this case uh, particularly when the material is a ductile material. While in case of the brittle material we know very well uh, in case of the material material similar mechanism, but results will be different what we will call as a micro fracture or maybe say uh, and the, there is a possibility of removal of the grains from a softer surface. So, difference is very clear if that there is a ductile material we will think about a micro fatic and micro cutting, uh, micro cutting while in case of the brittle material we will be considering micro fracture or removal of grains or plugging out of the grains. And finally, whether there is a ductile material or brittle material there will be wear debris generation that will be possibility will come as a it will act as a three body abrasion. So, initially I mentioned two body abrasion uh, starting and that is a possibility finally, this wear particle when comes to the loose form act as a third body also. So, the two body abrasion can lead to the three body abrasion. In earlier lecture I mentioned about the adhesive wear whether uh, adhesive wear will lead like a three body abrasion. Now, let us take a, a, a couple of examples. We, we have observed the two body abrasion in a number of manufacturing procedures, industrial equipments and automotive parts and that is why I mentioned that this abrasion mechanism is very uh, commonly observed in most of the machines, but it is the most dominating it is the most dominating um, the, the failure mechanism among all the wear mechanisms. 
it's not only a two body but i'm just saying abrasion is very common in this case and almost everybody has experienced uh, with a emery paper and when you rub emery paper against any surface you will be able to find out uh, some sort of uh, dust particle coming out or maybe some material removal from opponent uh, on the opposite surfaces what is the reason for this because uh, this uh, emery paper has a some sort of a um, we say that the grit what we call the grit size may be the 40 uh, which is a very coarse size and then if I use a coarse size, and a kind of size the material removal rate will be very very high and maybe if I use a grit size 320 then there is a possibility of what we call the fine uh, removal of material or maybe material removal rate will be much lesser in the situation. So, this is a typical example which almost everybody has experienced and this is the two body abrasion reason being the asperities are there on the emery paper and there is a some sort of soft surface and the surface is losing material and the material is getting come and getting deposited in the emery paper in this case region or what we call uh, this uh, the, the grit is itself is getting plugged or uh, with uh, this kind of a powder which is getting transmit transferred from a soft surface or soft material to the emery paper. That is why we say now the degree of abrasion as I showed in emery paper degree of abrasion if I go ahead with the coarse side degree of abrasion will be higher side while uh, degree of abrasion will be lesser if I go with a grid size 320 or fine uh, or very fine uh, the grid size in this situation. However, the, 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 this degree of abrasion depends on number of things like speed if I use emery paper the much higher speed naturally material rate removal rate will be very high. So, this is speed then comes a pressure if I apply more and more pressure you are on the emery paper material rem uh, removal rate will be very high. Another one is a hardness then now in this case particularly the soft and the soft surface becomes a little harder material rate will, uh, removal rate will be lesser and last one is a surface roughness if the surfaces are very rough in the situation material removal rate will be very high. And last in this case is if there is any other lubricant or contaminant in the situation where rate will come down because contamination and lubricant more or less will help to reduce abrasion and this is important to consider whenever we want to reduce abrasion and we do not have a control on a speed we do not have a control on the pressure or apply load and then we are not able to increase the hardness of material beyond certain limit surface roughness also again we do not have a very high finishing under the possibilities then the situation lubricant plays major role. However, lubricant uh, usage of lubricant itself will be kind of uh, costly and then there will be a number of other related parameters we need to account. But if we are uh, not able to control the speed we are not able to control uh, uh, applied load hardness and roughness on the lubricants or some sort of contamination will be helpful otherwise try to use hardness uh, contact pressure or maybe say increase in area and reduce the surface roughness to reduce the abrasion wear. So, these are the important aspects I am trying to show here another curve uh, um, the, where the uh, I am trying to show the comparison between the harder surface and the softer surface. If the hardness to the softness will like uh, almost the same one surface one hardness uh, we say the hardness of the surface one and hardness of surface two are almost same that means this ratio will turn out to be one that is a word here right and I am assuming that hardness measurement cannot be so accurate. So, there is a possibility of the plus minus 20 percent variation and in the situation again that this will be in this bracket and if you conduct number of experiments every time what we find the particles are uh, maybe the, the experimental lizards are lying in this kind of brackets. So, there will be a possibility of variation and another one if we are keeping uh, this uh, ratio as a 1 we will get a minimum wear rate something like uh, this. So, minimum wear rate occurs over here another point comes if ratio is very high then maybe the, the one surface is the and then maybe say this is the 10 times or H s 1 is equal to 10 times of H s 2 the naturally wear rate is going very high almost 1000 times. So, if I increase hardness by 10 times there is a possibility that wear rate will be uh, increased by uh, 
uh, 500 or 1000 times. So we need to keep this in a ratio uh, and then this ratio into account we need to consider this ratio and try to keep same hardness of the soft surface and the hard surface if we are going hard with a two body abrasion. So we say that two body abrasion is uh, hardness will play more role and this hardness should be a relative hardness of the surface or we say the HS1 uh, divided by HS2 should be uh, should be approximately equal to 1, it should not be very high. And however, if you want to use a one material, if I say material 2 should be used as a sacrificial element. So, if there is a sacrificial element coming in this case, then I can keep a lower hardness that means this material will be costly material and we can keep replacing as, uh, this uh, second material. In the situation I can keep a lower hardness and this is exactly what happened with a number of bearings where the stainless steel shaft or the shaft are very long and uh, they are very, uh, it is, we find they are costly and difficult to uh, change or reassemble also. So, that is how many times the bearings are uh, used as a sacrificial element. They, uh, we maintain a lesser hardness of the bearing and in um, the previous uh, lecture we covered one of the example where the hardness of the surface uh, steel surface was very high, the sharp surface was very high and bearing surface was kept little lower so that the shaft remains intact. So, in other words we can say if uh, on the hardness uh, of uh, HS1 is greater than 1.2 times HS2 almost a 0 where will occur on the surface one. If this ratio is a more than 1.2, if it is a lesser may be almost equal then we may find some sort of a scratch on the both the surfaces. So, it is important to consider whether material which we are using is going to act as a sacrificial element or material or not. If it is not sacrificial both the materials which are in a coming in contact are costly and we need to really take into care we need to consider it properly then we should keep a almost one and then uh, quite possible we may require some sort of lubrication to minimize the wear rate to very low value. Let us take uh, uh, other example uh, and, uh, where the particularly we are using the brittle material and we are mentioning that in this case in case of the brittle material we need to think about the their uh, face. What is the face in this case? You can see here the grains have been shown and grain sizes are more or less same. So, we can say they are a very fine grains and homogeneous. So, what will happen even uh, this uh, um, the asperity or some sort of uh, where debris which is coming into contact with a brittle material it will be able to chip up little bit material it will not be remove, able to remove a big chunk. The material removal rate will be lesser in this situation while coming in this case a heterogeneous some grains of the this size uh, and the some grains are maybe say this is the one this is the two this is the three. Now, the grain size in this case is very uh, high. So, quite possible sometime we will be able to get, uh, see that only this kind of grain has been removed sometime bigger pit has been formed somewhat the longer pit has been formed. So, we should avoid homogeneous face in case of the two body abrasion or in case of the abrasion. So, heterogeneous uh, face uh, uh, sorry heterogeneous face should be removed and homogeneous face should be uh, opted and we say we should keep a grain size as low as possible and that is why that this kind of curve is been shown here. If the grain size are lesser than 1 micron the wear rate is lesser uh, the, the, as the grain size are increased by the time times uh, maybe say 12 times we are able to see that failure is increasing by 70 to 100 times. So, this is important we should keep a low uh, in the grain size obviously the grain, uh, grain size should be as low as possible should be as low as possible. So, this is a, uh, some sort of information which is uh, important to uh, consider and let us uh, try to quantify. We have already quantified adhesive wear, can we quantify abrasive wear and that two body abrasive wear. So, that is uh, where we say Rabinovics uh, um, uh, and, uh, gave one equation 
and that is what we are going to describe or we are going to detail about those in that equation. What was assumption of the Rabinovics? He said that let us consider conical cavity or can a conical aspirity that means shown her here and then it has a some sort of uh, angle alpha as the aspirity angle and overall aspirity angle will turn out to be 2 uh, alpha under load uh, the, the penetration of this hard aspirity uh, that is what I am using the word hard aspirity is happening in a soft surface. So, the, this is a soft surface and uh, hard aspirity is penetrating into the soft surface at the depth of x that is what has been shown as x and then uh, aspirity I am assuming that uh, con, uh, this uh, cone angle is uh, 2 alpha overall and maybe the, we have shown alpha value in this case. So, what Rabinovics has assumed that conical aspirity indenting soft surface during the travel or during the motion that means this uh, aspirity will be able to travel in a right hand side direction or left hand side direction depends on the requirement. Another thing is that um, the, the way adhesive wear we assume uh, plastic deformation and complete material is removed as a wear debris and in adhesive wear also we consider the same thing and finally, we came up with a one constant or one wear coefficient which pro, uh, gives us some sort of probability that means what will be the probability of removal of this material as a wear debris. So, this is the same kind of uh, assumption. Uh, both assumption which have been uh, um, the, the considered here are more or less same what we have considered in adhesive here. So, quantification is going in the same direction. Then again uh, uh, another assumption, assumption for Rabinovics was the nth uh, aspirity that means, suppose there are number of aspirities um, like in this case one aspirate has been shown there are number of aspirities and assuming that O B any uh, aspirity in adhesive wear we assume ith aspirity while in this case it has been assumed nth aspirity and then uh, it load uh, on, the, on each aspirity of the, on the nth aspirity in this case w n is can be given as a hardness of the soft material. So, this softness um, soft material has a hardness h and uh, we are assuming some sort of uh, area this is what uh, and here it has been shown that this uh, penetration at the x uh, this uh, area when we say that the, this diameter of the cone diameter of cone is uh, equal to the 2 a. So, uh, uh, maybe so I say radius the radius equal to a in this case and pi a square we know and here there is a 0. So, average uh, area of the contact will turn out to be uh, 0.5 into pi a square if I multiply with the hardness I get a load and this load has been uh, sustained by nth aspirity. As we know that very well that A will not be known to us the way we did in adhesive wear similar thing we are doing here A square is given in terms of load on nth aspirity divided by 0.5 h into pi that has been a similar one. Another thing which we did in adhesive wear how much volume has been swept by this uh, aspirity is the same thing a hard aspiratory which is penetrated in a soft surface. If I move in this direction naturally it will try to sweep the, uh, the material and how do we represent that material if the volume is can be given by the radius uh, multiplied by the depth of penetration and sliding distance. And another thing uh, if this is the triangular geometry we know very well and then uh, A uh, in this case particularly alpha has been given uh, this is a where the alpha has been given x has been given and A has been given in this case. So, this is a A this is a x same thing is mentioned. So, I can represent x in terms of uh, A and alpha and that has been mentioned here A divided by 10 alpha. So, A is a lady here A divided by uh, 10 alpha and L and this A square can be replaced with uh, this equation we will bring a square and the substitute a square over here in terms of the w n divided by 0.5 h into pi and this is gives a volume swept by nth aspirity or maybe we can say nth aspirity uh, this volume can be swept in this way if we are assuming 100 percent material is being removed from uh, surface. This is assumption and more or less same assumption which we have uh, in the already studied in a uh, adhesive wear. So, if I want to really uh, calculate evaluate total wear 
what will be the total wear? It will be sum of wear caused by individual aspirity. Nth aspirity we assume. In this case, we can say uh, n is equal to 1, uh, 1 from another, maybe if a uh, last one or uh, capital N is also possible, or we can assume m. However, for simplicity, we say i is equal, uh, varying from 1 to n, and this is the w n, and the, this is uh, uh, assuming that almost all aspirities will have a similar angle. We are not changing the, this angle at all. This is the probability, and then we are going to count this in separately. So, this is the load. And this summation, we know that the total applied load will be summation um, and then the sum of uh, load and then the imposed by aspirity on the soft surface. So, there is a sliding distance, there is a total load and uh, 0.5 h is already there. Now, this is a geometry dependent. What will be the tan alpha? It will be completely geometry dependent. So, that is why we can divide this factor is a geometry dependent. This is the applied load, this is the what we require and this is a soft surface and this is can be given as a constant. So, this also can be use a word as a wear coefficient, um, wear coefficient in this situation and the last time we also discussed that uh, particularly when we were describing the additive wear. 1 divided by k will be given the wear resistance. The same terminology has been used. So, additive wear whatever we learn can also be extended to the abrasive wear. Now, in this case only the what are the, the way we mentioned earlier the total wear uh, of the from a surface will be proportional to normal load. It will depend uh, on hardness. So, it is inversely proportional to uh, hardness. It will be proportional to sliding distance. Another one is coming some sort of microstructure or aspirity dependent on that is a alpha based which is with here. Now, if I try to calculate the value of the k in terms of alpha, I can assume uh, in one case alpha is a 10 degree, in other case 20 degree, 30 degree, 40 degree, 50 degree up to 80 degree. That means, there is a sharp maybe the somewhat a flat and maybe finally coming something like a round. Now, may be almost round, so the angle is almost negligible. So, we know that if the, if the surface is a round, naturally cutting will be minimum and the fatigue will be more dominating and it will survive for the number of uh, cycles. And that is what I have been shown here, if the alpha is a uh, 80 degree and then overall angle is a 160 degree, the wear co coefficient is turned out to be like only 0.11, while if it is 10 degree which is a hypothetical case we will not see that that sharp peak in this case or the sharp uh, and the aspirity because it will cause a immediate breakage and maybe in a immediately it will get converted in a shift to the 40 degree, 45 degree or 50 degree. So, it will be lesser than 1. So, this is a what kind of uh, hypothetical example we will say that when the alpha is changing from 10 degree to 80 degree, wear coefficient is going to change almost uh, maybe say 300 to 60 times. So, this is uh, important to consider and then uh, we need to think uh, how do we really uh, make a surface, what kind of hardness we need to maintain, what kind of uh, normal load now the sliding distance we maintain to minimize abrasive wear. Now, we will move to the th uh, three body abrasion from a two body abrasion because in two body abrasion we develop equation which has a quite similarities as we have developed in case of the um, additive wear. Now, in coming uh, coming to the three body abrasion, now three by third body is basically third body is a like a foreign particle or particle generated during the uh, mechanism. It can be additive mechanism, it can be abrasive mechanism also, but it requires a three bodies. So, what is the three? This is I am assuming this is the number one, one body, this is the second body and here the particle is turning out to be third body. That is why the name has been given as a three body abrasion. As I mentioned earlier whether two body abrasion will be more harmful or three body abrasion will be more harmful. But that as says very clearly three body abrasion is a lame, less harmful compared to two body abrasion. And what is the reason for that? Is we said that because of the third body it can really go hard with some sort of a rolling action it will not only be causing the sliding. Naturally, if there is a the gap, 
if there is a some sort of a th th third body coming over here, it is not coming in a contact at all with any of the surface. However, if there is asperity is bound to come into contact uh, one way or another way. And uh, in this case, there is a more possibility of the rolling and that has been mentioned the laser sliding compared to the rolling and uh, people have say the sliding divided by rolling will be almost by kind of 0.2. So, that is why three body abrasion is a preferable compared to the uh, two body abrasion and we know very well two body abrasion will not be remaining for the longer time there is a possibility two body abrasion will get converted to three body abrasion. So, this is another example which I mentioned here if the, the wear coefficient for the two body abrasion ranges from a 5 into 10 to minus 3. 250 into 10 to minus 3, these are some hypothetical examples and compared to the uh, if I see the three body abrasion same situation, same load, same sliding speed we are comparing. In the situation this will be the one tenth of that. So, again these are the some numbers being given and here as I say the 20 percent here we are seeing the 10 times uh, reduction in a wear coefficient, but in actual case we need to do experiments and then only believe in the data. So, these data are giving some sort of qualitative comparison compared to the quantitative comparison. So, we should take this data start making the, 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 the selecting uh, the material start uh, thinking about how much hardness, what kind of uh, surface softness profile need to be maintained and after that we need to conduct a number of experiments to come up with a right solution. Another uh, and in this case the three body abrasion has been mentioned also and we showed in uh, adhesive wear there is a possibility that uh, three third body can be generated by oxide or wear out and this way. Now, this oxide again depends if the there is a uh, uh, oxide possibility is a hard materials will come out or soft materials will come out. When we discuss this in the phreatic wear we will uh, explain that. Uh, we will explain uh, about that uh, in phreatic we, we, we see that few iron oxide iron oxide turn out to be like a sol, uh, solid lubricant and, uh, and the few iron oxide becomes a very hard and then they cause a three body abrasion. So, we will be discussing that in a detail when we think about the phreatic wear right. And then I say that uh, iron oxide wear debris produced due to the adhesive wear caused further damage by abrasion. Here you are using the word abrasion reason assuming that there is a hard oxides are going to come out. However, there is a possibility that there will be soft uh, uh, oxides also. Now, if I want to keep a little more clearance, you say clearance larger than particle size and filtration will reduce the chances. If I want to keep a clearance, this is the word a clearance has been shown here. If we keep a clearance more than the particle size, then there will not be any damage to any of the surface. However, uh, the, this not in our hand many times uh, particle size will grow initially maybe it is a 1 micron and maybe continuously uh, sliding uh, will create a third, 3 micron, 5 micron, 10 micron or maybe a few particles because of very high surface energy they adhere to each other and make a bigger particle also. So, if we want to really reduce uh, uh, damage caused by the three body abrasion, we need to think about uh, particle size and the clearance and then if clearance is a more than particle size, then wear will be lesser. Another one is a filtration that as the particles are getting generated, we need to keep filtering out and that is the one easiest way what uh, we say that then they make a surface with a some sort of texture like this. So, there is a some sort of space available. Now, if the particle is coming and rolling and rolling and then finally, it will get trapped in this. So, particle will not be able to continue to the next surface, there is a possibility in this situation. So, we can make some feature and that is why we say the surface texture and that I was discussed earlier. So, this is the surface texture or design of surface to minimize the wear that is also possible. So, uh, and there are some examples has been mentioned as I mentioned that the earth moving equipment this kind of mechanism will be there and we do not have a chance even though you keep removing, but maintenance is important. 
coming the slurry pump, slurry pump again the number of uh, the, the three body abrasion phenomena will be there and maybe particle size will vary continuously. When thinking about the rock drilling, number of particles will get generated and then it will cause some sort of failure of the drill sandstone. So, uh, or when uh, crushers and uh, pneumatic transportation, even at the powder which we are transferring from one place to another place, it may act as a kind of a high impact uh, powder and it causes the damage of the, uh, on the pipe sandstone. Even in the case of the powder metallurgy in a dye, we, even though we make a dye very high hardness, but with the time there is a possibility to remove uh, maybe slowly the materials are getting removed even the nanometer level uh, thickness. But it will slowly will remove and then uh, it will cause a failure of the dyes and the dyes are very costly. We need to maintain this uh, dyes in the proper order and shoots also. So, these are the term, some examples of the three body abrasion and this kind of equipment keep facing the three body abrasion uh, failures. As I say addition, two body abrasion finally will lead to the three body abrasion. So, thinking about three body abrasion in a bigger way and uh, conducting more experiment and actual experiments are more important to understand this phenomena completely. Now, let us uh, consider a few uh, aspects of the particle itself. You can see here this is a particle is kind of a round particle. This particle is a kind of a, a sharp particles. So, uh, the particle may be even the, as I have shown here the 50 micron size right and uh, why we are using the word 50 micron because we cannot see lesser than 50 micron. That means, uh, something which we are not able to see and then that is acting against the surface and damaging the surface and we do not have any clue whether the particle is sharp or particle is a round. So, sometimes we use the word a roundness factor and then we say what is the roundness factor of those particles which we are really uh, working with or maybe the system has those particles. Now, in this situation you can see here there is a possibility initially the abrasive particle is something like a very sharp roundness factor is low. With the continuous usage quite possible the roundness increases that means, there is a chipping off of the, 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 the this point, chipping off of this point, chipping off this point and slowly slowly it moving to the, uh, in the, the, in the better and better factor. And whenever the roundness is almost kind of you know the, the circular in shape roundness will turn out to be 1. So, it is a, a, the varying from a point 1 to 1 and if the factor is a 1 then we say roundness is good and particle is on more safer side compared to the sharp particle which will cause a more and more damage. So, again the particle uh, shape will really influence also the kind of uh, wear. It is not only hardness, it is not uh, only the area of contact, it is not only the sliding speed, but particle shape also will affect the um, kind of the wear mechanism which we are going through or uh, maybe we will be observing it. So, in this case as I mentioned here, as I mentioned here shown here, grid with the sharp edges cut faster and speeding the wear and quite possible if we operate at the initial condition lesser, lesser speed and this sharpness can be trimmed uh, during the working condition itself. So, that is why many equipment or many machine when you buy a new one they say that you please operate this machine at the lesser speed or uh, whatever the uh, hard spirit is will they turn out to be the rounded spirit is and then the particles uh, which will come out in oil can be discarded and then we can give after first maintenance whatever the full speed uh, loading and most of the automobiles work on this kind of uh, principles. So, this is what I have mentioned the abrasive particles uh, can take a variety of the shapes or uh, forms angular which are the sharper one and then um, there is a possibility of the circular one. However, I have also mentioned on the flaky that is what uh, mostly the adhesive wear generates other flak or kind of the plate like a shape uh, particles will come and they are uh, as, as a plate the thickness is almost negligible. They keep uh, getting adjusted as, as per the situation. So, will not give a lot of resistance it will not cause more scratching. So, sometimes they are uh, better compared to the foreign particle. Let us take an example of the silica with uh, the dust particle. And the hardness of the silica itself is a 1100 VHN. It is very, very high hardness and far better than the higher, harder compared to the steel surface itself. So, when this kind of particles are, uh, are there in the environment, naturally we need to think how to adjust, 
how to really come up with the right results. I saw that in a previous slide when I mentioned about there are so many examples, earth moving equipment, slurry pump, rock drilling. In this case, all the particle hardness is very, very high and we need to think about regular maintenance of uh, those uh, equipment. This is uh, what I did mention. Now, uh, let us uh, try to summarize what we, uh, uh, we have co covered in uh, last uh, few slides. We say abrasive wear is uh, largely influenced by the grid characteristics, surface hardness and material ductile parameters. Resistance to wear is not a material property, but it is a situational and different different situation material will be of a different manner. Another one we say that there is a possibility of the many many grit particles. It is not only happening the very sharp particles or round particle, there will be kind of a mixture of number of particles. So, we will be getting a some sort of wear track which has a multiple uh, grit size uh, and then the impressions on that. And that is why we say that uh, there is a, a possibility that overall wear which we predict using the Rabinovich's equation may not be that high. Reason being the number of particles which are very sharp initially, they get blunt over the time and as they are getting blunt, it will, it will come down and maybe the micro cutting will turn out to be the micro cutting and that will be they can sustain 10 s to 6 cycle, 10 s to 7 cycle something like that. Another thing uh, we mentioned about the, when the material hardness is larger than the particle hardness. Uh, in this case, asperities uh, if I compare and they say we have come up with a ratio 0.8 to 1.2 and I mentioned very clearly that the surface hardness is 1.2 or more than that, then that surface will not get abraded at all. If the particle which is really impinging on the surface, hardness is lesser than 1.2 times of uh, the surface hardness again particle will not be able to do much damage to the surface. So, this is very important, but many times adhesive wear will generate a particle which are softer. I give an example of iron oxide also and I say that we will be discussing this in a fretic wear uh, case where, where uh, one iron oxide is a softer, other iron oxide is a harder and that is why we say sometimes red color oxide or blue and the black color oxide we will be detailing those things in a fretic wear. And but however, I also mentioned that if we keep the same hardness, now let us take example of the surface 1 hardness is uh, H and the surface hardness uh, material uh, 2 is also having a um, uh, same hardness. Then there is a possibility of some scratches on the both the surfaces and if as I mentioned if the surface hardness is more than 1.2, there will not be a possibility of even the making a scratch on the surface. So, this is important. Another thing uh, I mentioned about uh, like a, a given example of the uh, silica or the sand particle which is a very very uh, the very we say that uh, extreme abrasive material as such because the hardness is uh, more than 100, uh, 1100 VHN is then difficult to eliminate this kind of abrasive particles from environment or from uh, uh, the, the, the coming into contact with the surfaces and then uh, how do we stop it? So, that is why we need to come up with a new technology which we call as a coating technology. That means, keeping the surface intact may be ductile or may be tough surface and we will be making a coating of the 50 micron to 100 micron, 150 micron on the surface. That means, surface is only harder and the core is a tougher and when we have a both the combination toughness with the hardness, more or less we will be solving the problem, we will be able to solve the abrasive wear problems also. We will be discussing this uh, more in detail uh, when we discuss about the coating. Now, let us take a couple of more example of the three body abrasion. Three body abrasion at least I have observed uh, many times in automobile and we have seen that in IC engine that the loss of efficiency. Why the loss of efficiency? Because even the main bearing you are able to see there are number of scratches. So, there will be particles which is coming along with the oil is a lubricated case and they are able to make a scratches on the bearing. Similar scratches we have also seen on kind of the liner. So, this is a piston uh, liner arrangement and there will be some sort of lubricant in between. But because there is a scratches on the surface and then uh, sometime the film thickness will vary and then that is not able to keep a sufficient uh, support to the piston and there will be some possibility of the misalignment. And another thing is that if the debris of the size itself comes something like this, that means foreign particle of this, this size, naturally it will cause a more and more abrasion. So, uh, this uh, piston um, and the cylinder liner failure, bearing failure, 
that will cause a loss of efficiency in a uh, IC engine. And many times it has been shown that if the car is a bit uh, old, that vehicle will not be able to climb the slope also. Reason being the clearance which has been designed, there is a more clearance compared to that. And often people use a word that why not we go with a uh, textured surface. In previous uh, one of the example I mentioned here, the top surfaces are uh, trim, that means there is no peak, there is no asperity, but there are only valleys. So, these valleys will be very, very uh, good to uh, the retain the particle and keep uh, our we use the word earlier also ultra mild wear into ultra mild wear. Ultra mild wear in the same domain, uh, ultra mild wear to ultra mild wear only, and then by removing the particles uh, in ultra mild wear by removing the particles by removing the particles or maybe say uh, the particles are getting dumped in this maybe some particle comes in this directly happens here the particles come and then remain, remain in this. So, by removing the particles you are able to keep in a better uh, shape and this is a very important uh, the, the, this is the surface texture has come uh, from this point of view. Another thing as I mentioned that particles if they keep coming into oil even the oil will get a, a, a bad quality or the oil properties will change. So, we need to change the oil uh, regularly or we say the one good uh, solution for all this is a regular maintenance also. However, uh, um, if we are able to keep uh, all the concept intact, we can come up with a very good solution which will provide the best solution for every situation. Let us take another example, what uh, we have uh, covered in uh, maybe say um, initial lectures that brake pad wear and we showed this something like a, uh, the original uh, the pad is something like that and after wear out uh, the worn out pad is something like this. And this uh, uh, where the this kind of pads are utilized in the disc or maybe say a rotor as such and this whole uh, unit is uh, connected with a wheel hub. And then car we will have a four wheels like this that means a four, four uh, the total eight pads and the four pair of the pads. Now why the abrasive wear will occur about uh, this brake pad? We say abrasive wear is uh, one of the most common cause of the failure of the brake pad. Why? Reason being the dust and dirt will come from a surface and I mentioned the dirt itself has a hardness of 1100 VHN is a very high hardness again this surfaces or maybe some sort of a surface uh, and the some sort of a debris which are getting generated many times so this will not be very harmful but dust and all will be uh, harmful to uh, this kind of brake pad. They come into the brake pad and disc and we know very well when there is a uh, the pressure from outside to apply uh, the, the disc uh, to stop the disc using this brake pad. And if the particles come in between, naturally those will be very, very high stressed. When the particles are getting very highly stressed and then they are very high hardness also, that will cause a problem. And then one is that because of the such uh, and then the particles which are coming in between the pad and disc, there will be irregular control on the braking itself. You will not have a full control on the brake. Another thing is a disc will get on the worn out. So, it is not only in this case what we have talked about the, um, the wearing of wear a brake pad, but there is a possibility of wearing of the disc also or um, wear of the disc also will occur in this situation. So, uh, why this kind of situation and how do we avoid? We say that driving aggressively in the dusty environment or in the unclean environment should be stopped. So, once we know the know, have a knowledge, we can think about this and then we say that it will really damage otherwise if we keep kind of driving in this situation, either we need to change uh, the hardness of disc and the brake pad so that it can sustain or go for the regular maintenance, maybe every 3 months or 4 months we need to change the uh, brake pad and the disc arrangement or uh, maybe as a given example that we required a cleaning also. There is a possibility that maybe after driving for half an hour in a dirty environment, we need to clean it so that the particles are removed completely and ready for the next service or next uh, on the right. Now, I am trying to show a comparison between the abrasive wear and adhesive wear. You are able to see the adhesive wear uh, uh, shown on the surface 
and then abrasive wear shown in the surface and there is a more ir irregularities we have observed the soft surfaces will have a more irregularities particularly when we are in a subjecting it to the abrasive wear. So, there are more and more irregularities reason being the particle sizes which will come out uh, from a softer surface there will be various uh, variable size while in adhesive wear we do not find such a variation such a high variation. You can see here maybe that the, I can quote this as a uh, part of the adhesive wear because a flat like uh, shape, but this is a cutting uh, no, 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 which is the number 1, number 2, uh, number 3 they are the different different particles in coming from abrasive wear and then uh, variations are very high. So, many times we say how do we really detect after the analysis whether it has come from uh, abrasive wear or it has come from adhesive wear. Mostly adhesive wear are the flat like and the softer surface relatively softer and then they are not long cut maybe say the dimensions or the aspect ratio is different while in the case of uh, um, abrasive wear adhesive, uh, this aspect ratio is different. So, what is the key difference between the wear uh, debris in adhesive wear and abrasive wear uh, is a size, shape and hardness. So, the size are different, shapes are different and hardness are different. Sizes in the case of uh, uh, adhesive wear uh, particularly uh, if first as I say shape it will be more like a plate and then uh, um, plate have a more or less uh, kind of rectangular size it will not very huge uh, difference. Hardness is will, be, will be on more on softer size compared to the even uh, parent material main times while coming to the uh, adhesive wear as I say the smaller flax will be there size it will be lesser lesser it can be a rectangular shape and the debris also will be softer. While in case of the abrasive sphere, the part aspect ratio is larger than the dimension, it can be 1 to 10, or uh, the length you are able to see is uh, very long compared to other dimension because of the cutting. And then uh, there will be irregular shape, you can see here this uh, 1, 2, 3, uh, 3, 4, 5, all are irregular shapes in this case, and they are generally harder compared to the um, uh, adhesive wear. So, these are the, uh, the main differences between abrasive wear and adhesive wear. I will just uh, try to highlight one experiment which was done in my lab and I am just trying to show this is a uh, set up uh, not it has been many words have been written many arrows have been shown, but I am trying to say to that we did experiments uh, this is the motor, this is the dynamometer and then we try to load it that means because we required a speed, we required a load and we required a metal 1 and metal 2 surface 1 and surface 2 and that surface 1 and 2 was in the gearbox somewhere here it had been shown in the bigger uh, maybe say the zoom way in this uh, the over here. Here the two surfaces inside they are in a contact and after doing a number of experiments we find out the particles in different shape which are more like a abrasive wear. So, in this case abrasive wear uh, why we are using the word abrasive wear here because we try to keep in a lubricated condition. So, whenever there is a lubricant uh, we say the adhesive wear generally are avoided or will not occur in case of uh, adhesive wear will not occur in case uh, uh, there is a lubricant. So, there is a more chance of uh, uh, abrasive wear in those particles uh, and then surface 1 and surface 2 what we did we use a one gear which having a number of T 53 other gear uh, which is a known as a pinion uh, number of T 27 and then the hardness was kept more or less same 30 30 so that the uh, wear can be also reduced and then uh, applied the uh, um, rotational torque was around 40 Newton per uh, Newton meter and then RPM was uh, rotational speed because uh, we can find out the model was uh, 1.8 or 2 and then uh, in this case RPM uh, um, there is a 1200 RPM it was operated for around 200 hours and we find all kind of particles, but all kind of particles means so you can see here the cutting particle you can see here fatigue particle maybe the connect the 2 3 uh, particle together slightly other uh, irregular particle in this. So, we find all kind of particle and abrasive wear mechanism adhesive wear will be finding more or less flight particles and then kind of chunk which may be if after making a, a, a adhesive wear the particle comes out and continuously between the two surface this will also act as a abrasive wear particle and finally, may turn out to be like you know, some sort of splendor or aspect ratio may change in the situation also. One more example I am trying to show where uh, a myth 
that the spherical particle will not cause a abrasion. It is not right thing and to judge that we try to do a same experiment that what may have been already mentioned about a disc. We make it we made a disc and this is a disc same thing other the brick and we are applying a brick instead of the pads we use a some sort of smart liquid that we call it a MR liquid a magneto rheological liquid. And what is a magneto rheological liquid if these are the particles basically iron particles are pure iron and maybe uh, purity is almost a 99 percent plus right purity is a 99 percent plus. So, that uh, the whenever we are trying to magnetize and demagnetize when it gets some we magnetize the particles they get aligned in this form and uh, this aligned particle when you are subjected to the relative velocity they also tilt without getting fragmented also. However, when we switch off current now we stop magnetic field they immediately come back to this shape. So, that is why we use the word a smart liquid and uh, coefficient of friction in this situation particularly in this situation is varies from 0 0.03 to the point uh, 0.6. So, uh, we can change a uh, coefficient of friction significantly in fraction of second that means, this is the in this case what is the advantage this can be used as a green break word also. This will remain on the green break because we are not applying a break uh, uh, shoes uh, or the brake pad against a disc because when you apply uh, the brake pad against a the disc there will be wear out uh, of the particle uh, will come out of the particle which will be wearing out from a, either from a pad or from a disc will be release in environment it will cause a pollution of environment. So, we made it this uh, green uh, brick and then everything will uh, was enclosed and this fluid had a particles and then particle uh, concentration was very high and that is what has been shown 80 to 90 percent weight percentage of these particles and this is a microstructure but 20 micron you can see here microstructure and you are able to see like a sky in number with a number of stars exactly same uh, this is the uh, fluid or uh, what is it the MR liquid this is MR uh, fluid with a number of particles in that and that percentage is 80 to 90 percent and this is the only 20 micron size that means uh, you can see the particles will be many many particles in this case. Then uh, we did a number of experiments we found and we found the failure of the disc. What we were uh, in this case we eliminated pad no pad wear it will not be open to environment that is why we use the word the green brick. However, there was a disc and then uh, you can see even the disc has a number of wear circles either they are wearing from here if the here the wear is a not that significant, but as we move out wear of the disc is increasing continuously. Another thing is that this is the same kind of abrasive wear you can see irregular um, the fractions sometimes the, the some places very deep somewhere scratches are much deeper kind of the pit formation material has been removed from a surface. So, this is the abrasive wear and these are the spherical particles and they are not irregular particles. So, even a spherical particle will cause a damage if the spherical particles are subjected to the sliding condition when we are applying a brake we are almost stopping the we are almost stopping the rotational speed the naturally sliding will occur under this sliding even the spherical particles will cause a wear out and that has been shown here and more close dim image you can see that even the brake. Uh, and then the, the disc uh, which uh, was used here this brick gets embedded with a particle also that means even the spherical particles after going through plastic deformation they get embedded in the disc also. So, here the three body abrasion which was initial thinking got converted to two body abrasion earlier we were discussing something like a two body abrasion will lead to three body abrasion. Well, in this case we got a three body abrasion to two body abrasion and that is the important thing and uh, this will uh, really frictional coefficient vary significantly and then, uh, and then the other parameters also we need to be uh, designed appropriately. Of course, uh, uh, we increase the hardness of the, uh, the disc brake significantly higher compared to particles and after that it uh, started working well. Now, um, uh, this is my last slide of the lecture what I am trying to make the difference between adhesive wear and abrasive wear. 
we say abrasive wear are uh, uh, the mostly happens under high load and then uh, local welding uh, some sort of uh, electron transmission in the surface and the transfer uh, of the uh, material 2 is that this is the material 1 and material 2 here the material 2 is going to get transferred to the material 1 and that has been shown here you can see here this is a uh, material uh, 2 is getting transferred to this and uh, that is what uh, we uh, use a word in abrasive wear uh, in adhesive wear. Coming to the abrasive wear we divide in two body abrasion and three body abrasion. We say the two body abrasion when the wear coefficient will be uh, uh, the lesser compared to the, um, the, the sorry it will be more compared to three body abrasion reason being there will be possibility of the rolling and the three body can be in a different different shape not necessary uh, will be in the same shape. Another thing is that as they are not intact with the neither surface 1 or surface 2, so they can roll it and slide to roll, roll ratio is uh, uh, 0.2 something like that that means more almost 80 percent the rolling is up, uh, occurring and that the most of the kinetic energy because which is getting transmitted to those particles is getting consumed in the rolling motion itself. So, in a, otherwise in this case uh, particularly when asperities are hard and almost all energy are getting and is consumed in abrading other surface also. So, the abrasion in this case uh, will be more we say the abrasion will be higher uh, in uh, two body uh, abrasion will be higher or will be high in uh, two body abrasion uh, two body abrasion phenomena or mechanism compared to the uh, three body abrasion. So, we will cover uh, uh, the, the erosive and cavitation uh, wear in uh, uh, the next lecture that is a lecture 5 wear mechanism erosive and cavitation wear. Thank you.